determine whether it was an intruder or or somebody inside the house if it's from inside the house it's not like the John Bonet where you have three people inside the house and you have to determine which one it was or if it was all three or if it was two here three are dead one's alive you, know, you don't need me to deduce that it's either an intruder or it's Jeffrey McDonald, okay? Let me tell you how I've come to my conclusion of how I determine whether it was an intruder or not. Number one, the hair in Colette's hand. In 2014, I believe, I may have that wrong, in the 2000s, that hair was, te a test, was tested and it wasn't an intruder's hair as the defense claimed. You know whose it was? You guessed it. It was Jeffrey McDonald's. DNA confirmed. Still doesn't mean he did it, right? I mean, just because it's in her bloody clenched hand doesn't mean that he's guilty. But let me tell you why he is guilty. We talked before about crimes of opportunity and weapons of opportunity. For the most part, if you go to a place to commit a crime, you take a weapon with you. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes, as in serial killings, you will see sometimes just strangulation, manual. Not all the time, but I when I think of that, I think of the Green River Killer. Killing prostitutes and strangling them. It's different. Most of them are getting in your car, in your controlled environment. Who's to say you don't have a backup weapon in case something goes south? In this case, Jeffrey McDonald wants you to believe that four hippies came into his house with no weapons. You know why? All of the murder weapons came from inside that house. That's the most significant piece of evidence you need to hear. Paring knife. Club. The club is crucial and I'll tell you why in a minute in the ice pick. Now, Jeffrey McDonald's supporters will say, you cannot conclusively say that the paring knife nor the ice pick came from his house. Well, you have witnesses that say, he said he had an ice pick when I was there and I was trying to break off the ice with my hands. Jeffrey McDonald went and got an ice pick. To me, that concludes that he had an ice pick in the house. As for a paring knife, there was, there was a different type of knife that was found in the master bedroom that had a bent blade on it. That's significant because one of the babysitters for the McDonald's remembers that specific knife because of the bent blade. Now that specific knife is not the knife used in the stabbings. It was a paring knife. But yet, don't you find it ironic that that bent knife is found at the crime scene along with a paring knife. So let's just, just for shits and giggles, let's throw out that paring knife and say, okay, well, the paring knife, we can't conclusively say came from the McDonald's. Four hippies are coming into this house with one paring knife. 
That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. Now you're going to say, well, what's to say that the hippies didn't go in the kitchen and grab a paring knife? I'm not saying they couldn't. But the possibility, yes. But the probability of that is nil. It's nil. That paring knife came from inside the house. Just like the ice pick and just like the club. Now, how do we know that the club came from inside the house? This is very significant, okay? Joan Jett and the Runaways, you're going to be proud of this one. All right, listen. Introduced at trial is the club. The club is found out back, okay? Feet from the back door with the paring knife, which is found under a bush with the ice pick. Everything's out there. First of all, if an intruder brings a weapon, he's leaving with that weapon, okay? And he's not discarding it out the back. Period. This club was 31 inches long and it was used to balance the bottom of the bed in the master bedroom. Now, how do we know that? There is paint on the bed that corresponds with that club, that piece of wood. That match up identical identical okay there there is zero doubt zero doubt in my mind that, that club that piece of wood came from underneath the master bedroom that the bed was sitting on okay let's say this is the club okay this is the the foot of the bed and it rests on it to balance it out because for some reason it was broke and he had stuck this piece of wood. And when they painted it, when you removed it, when you removed the club or the removed the bed, there was imprints of paint that matched up perfectly. Now, now this gets interesting, okay? So now what can we deduce other than, okay, the weapons came from inside the house. Not only that, let's just talk about the club. The club underneath the foot of the bed. Who knows that that's there? I goddamn guarantee you, hippies, intruders, don't know that that weapon is there. It's... It's not like a gun underneath a bed. It's a, it's a piece of wood, 31 inches. Okay? Now, Colette knows it's there. Jeffrey knows it's there. But do they know it's a weapon? No. They're not thinking that. But let me tell you what went down to make one of them think that it was a weapon. Let's go back to the time that this occurred, three o'clock in the morning. A significant event had to happen at three o'clock in the morning for this to occur. Intruders coming into an unlocked house? Yes, that would be a significant event. Front door was locked by all accounts, back door, not sure. When the MPs got there, the back door was not locked. Could that have been from Jeffrey McDonald opening up the back door and throwing those weapons out? Yes, possible. We're not there yet. But something happened at 3 o'clock in the morning. And let me tell you what I think happened. Now, again, I always tell you I don't like to speculate on cases, especially active cases. And I don't on active cases. This ain't an active case, folks. This guy's been in jail for 50 years. I'm going to tell you my theory. Well, I know. Get excited because I'm finally going to tell you something and not say and be wishy-washy on it. Well, I am going to be a little wishy-washy on some of the things. 